there is a project going on for quite, quite a few decades now that goes all the way back to corpor uh, corporeal fem feminism, for instance. And at some point, it seemed like it's already people were fed up with it. It's like, oh, bodies again, co co corporeality again. Uh, but I think it's an ongoing project, and, and it's a project that still hasn't uh, uh, um, you know, exhausted its, its, its possibilities. And I think it sort of extends interestingly into uh, uh, some more recent developments, uh, uh, such as object-oriented ontology, for example. Uh, um, um, the, there's... Um, you know, there's at least two levels to, to this question, the question of how, how corpor corporeality can um, somehow challenge, problematize, or dismantle even uh, uh, the, 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 the liberal um, humanist subject. Um, obviously, there would be this more conceptual level, philosophical level, um, and yes, I could sort of come up with some conceptual uh, uh, constructions uh, 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 around this, you know, how, how uh, the materiality of the body uh, uh, is somehow an excess that uh, uh, the liberal humanist subject cannot somehow account for. Uh, um, but there's also, of, of course, b b behind this purely uh, conceptual philosophical question, there is a political question, um, uh, you know, that, that follows, that is, if we are able to uh, 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 problematize the liberal humanist uh, subject through sort of uh, 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 through the body, sort of uh, uh, starting our thinking from the body, from corpore corporeality. What follows is uh, is a possibility for uh, uh, for a new politics to to develop around differently understood uh, uh, subjectivities or. Uh, or, or, or non-subjectivities, or positions, or uh, different modes of uh, relationality. Um, um, yeah, but uh, you know, to work out the details uh, um, is, uh, as I said, an ongoing project. And uh, I, I try to do some of it in, in my recent book, In Bodies, Bodies Out of Rule, um, by, uh, yes, looking at some uh, uh, markers of difference. Uh, obviously, difference is one of the key terms here as well in, in relation to corporeality. Uh, but then there is, one has to be careful uh, not to uh, uh, um, uh, fall too easily into this language of multiculturalism and then sort of creating a few boxes uh, like on the basis of, say, race, ethnicity, sexuality, and so on, and then sort of nicely manage those boxes, uh, uh, um, um, you know, uh, uh, in a, in a you know, uh, I mean, in, 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 in the way of uh, control and, and discipline and, uh, and surveillance and, uh, and uh, yeah, po population management. Um, so instead, um, um, you know, dif difference, as I understand it, is something that, that uh, that will always precisely problematize any such uh, uh, neat categorization of, of social bodies. The aesthetic is, is a relatively new development in, in my thinking, in fact. Um, uh, even though, as a, as a person with a, with a literary background, uh, a literary theory background, obviously uh, the, the questions of the aesthetic uh, or the literary uh, have always been sort of uh, close to me. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting how the, the, the category of the aesthetic, as I, as I use it, as I understand it, um, how it relates to the body itself. And at, at a very basic level, uh, uh, what I understand by the aesthetic is um, uh, uh, the, the body's capacity to be affected by, uh, by sensations and, and affects. Uh, um, and and, and f um, there is an interesting way, there, um, potentially, in which we could start from, from this level, from, from this um, um, uh, level of the body's uh, ability to be affected and ability to respond as well. Uh, 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 to sensations that we could perhaps try to think, you know, you, borrowing perhaps the, a, a, the term from uh, Jacques Rancière, that we could sort of uh, try to 
distribute the visible or the, the percep perceptible uh, in different ways, which of course in the Ranserian project translates more or less directly into, into the political paradigms, uh, political logics uh, that we live in. If, if we extend the aesthetic to art, th th these are not synonyms of course, but art as, as that uh, uh, kind of practice where uh, the aesthetic um, is primary, um, or rather the kind of practice where, which re which, which, for which, um, which recognizes the, the fact of the ontological uh, 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 primacy, priority of, uh, uh, of the aesthetic. Um, then um, um, art, as I understand it, uh, uh, is uh, uh, this constant uh, uh, experimentation with, um, okay, with aesthetic modes, let's say, uh, with, uh, um, with, the, with the distribution or, or division of, um, of the visible, and through this, art creates what I, what I consider uh, art is able to create what I call queer objects. And queer objects, uh, uh, they don't necessarily have to do specifically with, um, I don't know, sexuality in this definition, but they have to do with uh, kind of undecidable ontological and legal uh, status uh, uh, that you know, cannot claim any uh, uh, logic of authenticity. Um, and this could be an interesting lesson for queer politics, which could be understood as um, the practice of creating uh, queer social objects, in a way. Okay, uh, um, um, uh, that is something. Of course, th this is a, a notion. Uh, this queer social, uh, uh, queer social object. This could be similar to uh, the Deleuzian idea of assemblage. Uh, however, uh, now the idea of assemblage doesn't necessarily carry this, uh, uh, this aesthetic um, um, dimension. Uh, whereas I think when I say queer social objects, I think that by thinking about object, uh, like an object of art, uh, uh, I think that this aesthetic is somehow embedded in this, in, in this notion. Um, and, 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 and by creating such, such queer social objects, I mean, you know, they may fail completely, they may be completely ephemeral, uh, uh, or else they may actually possibly open up new, new uh, uh, possibilities for making politics, for doing politics. The, the important distinction that I'm making is between uh, uh, the aesthetic and uh, representation or the representational uh, regime, uh, where uh, the way I understand uh, representation is um, a kind of logic, a kind of economy that uh, uh, sort of demands some sort of loyalty. Uh, that, uh, you know, w once you're represented, you somehow should try to, you know, you, you, you should enter the circular movement between um, how you're being represented, how you're representing yourself. Uh, 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 this kind of cuts off the possible, say, rhizomatic uh, vectors of, um, of becoming. It, it sort of disciplines you into, into, into a, 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 uh, uh, a subjectivity, a fixed sort of sub subjective position. Um, so when I talk about the ethics of betrayal, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, a, a, a simple explanation of that would be um, being, <laughs> being able to betray yourself uh, uh, as well as being able to betray, uh, so, sort of to, to suspend or even uh, cut, uh, dissolve uh, uh, the social contract in some way, which is, not always a nice thing, let's say. It's not always a happy thing, because I think depression, for example, queer depression in particular, is a kind of breaking of the, of the social contract in a way which is obviously, you know, it, it means suffering. Uh, uh, but there may be other ways, uh, much more maybe playful, uh, um, of, of suspending or breaking the social contract. Um, uh, and yeah, and, and but, but, but they also probably um, um, entail having to, you know, th this, this uh, uh, readiness uh, to, to, to betray yourself as well. Yourself, sort of the way 
uh, you're being represented or you uh, uh, or how you have been representing yourself uh, up to a point. It's been a, a, a very uh, uh, pleasant exper experience. It's been a very uh, thought-provoking experience. Um, uh, the the uh, I, I think that uh, the, the organizers uh, um, are have created not only sort of in, in terms of the kind of framework that they have created for uh, lectures and discussions, which is which which works very well for everybody, I think. Uh, but also, you know, the, organi the organizers have, have managed to create um, um, a very good atmosphere, very conducive to, uh, uh, to a kind of non-castrating uh, uh, um, being with each other in, in the sense of sort of uh, 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 non-threat, you know, a, a kind of non-threatening, uh, but truly uh, uh, um, uh, thought-provoking context uh, for um, you know, more intellectual exchanges, uh, but also, you know, I don't know, affective exchanges perhaps as well, aesthetic exchanges. Um, so, yeah, well, I'm not sure about the directions in which, uh, I, I, okay, I, I wouldn't like the, the, the event to become big, uh, because I think that 30, 40 people is precisely the kind of nicest group of people you can have to, to, to maintain this, this, this kind of good, atmosphere, the lively, vivid, sort of uh, uh, lively atmosphere, yeah. But also intellectually very, very, very productive.